Okay, good morning. And that's, uh, we're going to deal with some neuroeconomic stuff this morning, uh, your brain on money. Um, you've probably seen, uh, there's been a mass of papers out on all of this sort of stuff. There was even in the 26th September issue of Science, um, Can Neural Data Improve Economics? You both saw that, right? The um, work of Delgado. Um, it, interestingly, it ended up, this, this commentary. Um, still, the philosophy of Delgado et al., that neural findings show great potential for improving economic analysis is that one that should be endorsed well before the time when neuroscience and economics become one. I would have thought that after this couple of weeks that, that this is a sort of <laughs> a little bit late and that people would have hoped to have worked this stuff out a little earlier. And it would be great fun to find out what exactly was happening in the markets over those last two weeks. Um, <laughs> the... the uh, there's a book um, by Jason Zweig, as well, which I refer you to, who's a senior writer for Money Magazine, called Your Money and Your Brain, How the New Science of Neuroeconomics Can Help Make You Rich. I don't know whether he's been getting many calls over the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, but, but in here, you'll find lo lots of references to uh, using a, a fMRI and so on. And he spent some time having his own brain scanned at Stanford. And uh, the person who scanned him and who's featured in the book is our first speaker, who's a professor at Stanford, deals with these subjects, will give us a primer on what went wrong and how to avoid it next time, Brian Knudsen. Mm -hmm.